Hello again, welcome back, and happy holidays. Hopefully everyone had an amazing Christmas. I, I am very fortunate to say that I had an amazing Christmas. My wife bought me this brand new camera for my channel, is the Canon 90D. Can't wait to show it to y'all. I have it set up in the back, ready to switch over. I'm gonna try to use some of this movie magic to switch from my now iPhone 11 to my new Canon 90D. Let's see if I can do it. All right, I guess I'm not there yet. And there we have it. So hopefully y'all enjoy the new setup. I'm gonna try to slowly progress to get a little bit better on the channel. With that out of the way, finally with the, the purpose of this video, I'm not even prepared. So again, we are revisiting the ASRock A300. But this time, I'm gonna show you how to install the 4000 APU 4750G. Now this, you're gonna have to buy secondhand because these were not originally designed to be sold to regular consumers. They were originally designed for OEM manufacturers like HP, uh, Lenovo, Dell, uh, so on and so forth. So I had to buy this off of eBay. Um, hopefully they're still around when you get to try to buy one of these. Um, they are gonna be a little bit more pricey and so on and so forth. Um, I am going to show you step by step how to install this and also going to show you how to do the BIOS step by step mainly. So, so ASRock had actually made um, beta BIOSes, beta BIOS for the A300 to actually install some of the 4000 APUs. However, when they finally decided to actually make the X300, they pulled all the beta BIOS. So there was many they had actually made. They had had um, an L version, N version, and I'll put the numbers right here. Just the, all the ones that I know about. There was a, an R and an S. As far as I know, the S was the most stable beta BIOS for this, as far as I am aware. Now. There is an article that actually shows and tells you how to use the BIOS from the X300 and flash it onto your A300. And that's what I actually did today. Now, because it's an X300 BIOS, this motherboard will not recognize it. So you need a tool, a special tool to actually flash that BIOS onto this motherboard. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now, before any of that, Word of caution, I am not responsible in any shape, form, or fashion if you break your motherboard. Many things can go wrong, whether you flash the incorrect BIOS, the BIOS could be corrupted in somehow, even through, through download, or if you lose power, um, you could run the risk of breaking your motherboard, since there's no BIOS switch on these that allows it to have multiple BIOS on there. If something goes wrong, chances are the computer's not going to work anymore. However, if you are willing to try it and you're willing to upgrade your A300 so you can put the new CPU in there and not have to buy the new X300, keep watching. All right, I'm going to show you step by step on how to download the proper BIOS for the X300 and the tool that you're going to need to flash the BIOS. So we're going to stop by Igor's lab. Uh, huge thanks to everything, everything for having such a nice article. Um, one of the first things you're going to notice is that the website is actually in German so you're going to need to translate it into English. But he talks about how you need to go to the MSI forum to download the tool. Also make sure that your USB stick is formatted to FAT32. Go over here to properties. And you will see that my USB is formatted to FAT32. Uh, 
uh, make sure you download the BIOS from ASRock's website. So here's X300. You're going to scroll down to the support section, then BIOS. And here's the 1.4 that is currently out during the filming. Hit the download button. All right, then we're going to go to MSI Forum where they talk about this tool for flashing BIOS. We're gonna download this UEFI shell flash tool. Go right here, hit the download button. Once you've got everything downloaded, going to go into the files you're going to get the files that's inside the folders and put just the files themselves into the USB and I'm going to show you exactly what that's supposed to look like here in a second so when you look at your USB it should look exactly like this now we're going to need to change the name of this BIOS it even says right here to name it to this format right here. This is actually a MSI style uh, naming. So we're going to have to rename the BIOS. You might be able to put something else there, but uh, I can confirm that this name works per perfectly. Once you've changed the name, safely restart your computer and go into your BIOS. All right, once you get into your BIOS, you can see right here, A300, P3.6 is the current uh, BIOS that I have. Also, uh, on this motherboard, it is not F2, I believe, that ASRock claims that you use to actually enter into BIOS. It is actually delete, so make sure that when you're waiting for BIOS to come up, you're smashing delete. Alright, so on a normal BIOS flash, you would use the tool function, go to UEFI update, instant flash. However, you can see that there's no file detected this way. So you have to go over to the exit, boot override, and you have to select the USB that you have put the, Im the image on. All right, so once you have selected the USB that has the image on it, you'll have this screen right here. And then all you gotta do is press any button and it'll start flashing. Now, Hopefully you're ready for the consequences of this because if anything goes wrong, your motherboard isn't going to be working anymore. So if you're sure, press any key and then it'll continue to start flashing the motherboard. Once it gets to the end, it'll tell you that everything is complete. Just type in the word reset, hit enter, and the system will restart. Alright, once the computer restarts, you can go back into BIOS, and as you can see, my motherboard is now registering as a X300 with the P1.4. There's a lot of additional stuff now added to your BIOS. Um, I have not tested all of it, but I can confirm that XMP or any RAM speed changes is not currently working with this setup. Hit save and enter into desktop. All right, so if you've flashed your motherboard correctly and it still works, you can now switch over your 3400G or whatever over to your new 4000 APU. In order to, if you, for some reason you don't like that setup, you have to use that flash tool to go back to your um, P3.6 um, BIOS but also if 
you've already got the 4000 APU installed and you want to go back on the BIOS, you need to install your old CPU first. Because if you try flashing an older BIOS in this and you've got a newer CPU, you run the risk of breaking your motherboard because as it tries to restart and it sees that there's an incorrect CPU installed, chances are it's not going to work. All right, with that warning out of the way, now I'll show you how real quick how to swap it over if you don't already know how to swap over your CPU. Once you've got your CPU swapped over and it's up and running, now you're ready to have some fun. So I've done a couple benchmarks. All I really did, I didn't go a whole lot of in depth into the benchmarking. I did um, Cinebench R26, whatever the newest Cinebench is without. I did single core, um, multi core for both the 3400G, the 4050G, and also I did Geekbench. The reason why I didn't do any gaming benchmarks is that the new 4750G has the Vega 8 graphics, but it's better IPC than the Vega 11 found in the 3400G. The, the performance gain that you get is very minimal, maybe one or two FPS from the new 4750G, and I don't really see that much of a difference. Really the difference you're going to see is in the IPC improvements and the thread count and core count from the new 4750G. So check out some of the benchmarks. So as you can see, if you've already got the A300 and you don't feel like buying the new X300 but you want the new CPU, with this free step, you can actually flash the BIOS to run that new CPU, as long as you're willing to take that risk. Um, I didn't play a whole lot with the BIOS settings. Um, I can tell you, for some reason, with this 4750G, when I tried to turn on XMP or try to adjust any of the memory speeds, for some reason, it would not work. Um, I was able to uh, allocate more of my system RAM to the, the uh, graphic portion of it so I could have at least 8 gigs of RAM, VRAM, while playing video games. Um, other than that, I really didn't try any of the overclocking and anything like that. Um, I don't think this is really set up for it, even though in the forums it's pretty much the exact same motherboard. I didn't really get into it very much. So hopefully you found this interesting and helpful, especially if you do have an A300 and you want to step up to a better CPU. Um, I just find it fun. I thought it was a, a, a challenge I was willing to take. Um, thankfully it did work out for me. So if you're willing to try something like this, go right ahead. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully you like the video and uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I shall see you in the next one. Thank you.